Christy in Canada. I'm here to spill the tea on all things immigration. One random fun fact about me, I'm deeply into glass skin. Uh, and I even took a pilgrimage to Korea to the skin gods. I will tell that story in the end credits. Jessica's story, Chicago, Illinois. How far along are you? The nurse asked without looking up. 34, no, 35 weeks today, I answer. And was there a bloody show? She throws the question out there as she continues to type. A what? I ask as calmly as I can without showing how freaked out I am. A bloody show. She finally glances at me. I don't know. I squeak out. She sighs the sigh of working with an imbecile. And in this case, the imbecile is me. When my husband Jordan was placed in the US, I thought that living here would be a fun little adventure for us. Two to three years of living in a new space. I mean, how different could it be? We're Canadian for crying out loud. We traveled to the States since we were kids. I even used to cross the border to pick up cheap textbooks when I was in university. But we found ourselves pregnant earlier than we planned, and our little adventure was increasing in stakes. As I stand in front of this nurse holding my pregnant belly, this feels like the opposite of an adventure. It feels like terror. None of the baby classes prepared me for this, for how big this all feels and how alone I feel right now. All I want is my mom to make me feel safe and to be back home. Do you have insurance? The nurse pipes in and pulls me back to reality. Yes, what's the policy number? What's the policy number? I think to myself. Oh shit, what is the policy number? I start to rummage through my purse. Where's the card Jordan gave me? I keep combing for it. D did I leave it at home? Damn pregnancy brain. Will this be covered? I start to panic thinking, is there a possibility that it won't? I do have insurance, I just can't find it right now. Just before she answers, Jordan calls. I'm sorry to the nurse and pick it up. The nurse, she wants to know if we have insurance. We have insurance, right? Jordan says we do and begins to read out the plan number. I am admitted and it turns out the baby is fine and everything's gonna be okay. But I had my first feeling of what being a non-citizen feels like. And for this Canadian, it was truly, truly scary. Giving birth. I am your immigration bestie and I am here to spill the tea on all things immigration. And you thought you would not get a section on babies? Ha ha ha. Read ahead, especially if you don't have kids yet, or if you think you may, even in the far, far distant future. Also, if you are the partner to the person who's thinking of giving birth, read this section as well. Childbirth in Canada. Canada takes a distinctive approach with a strong emphasis on accessibility and inclusivity. Here are the key points to consider before you think about making mini versions of yourself. Universal healthcare. As mentioned before, Canada has a robust universal healthcare system. This means that maternity care, including prenatal checkups, labor and delivery, and postpartum care is covered for all residents. It's like having a golden ticket to the chocolate factory. Expected mothers don't have to worry about enormous medical bills, but you still have to worry about gestational diabetes, so chocolates have to be in moderation. This ensures that maternity care is accessible to all, regardless of income or insurance. Midwives and doulas. In Canada, midwives and doulas play a vital role in the birthing process. They offer support, guidance, and care during pregnancy, labor, and postpartum. It's like having experienced guides on your journey, providing personalized care and emotional support. In Alberta, where I live, you can choose between a doctor or a midwife for your pregnancy and birthing journey. Mind you, doctors and obstetricians will step in if it is deemed medically necessary and if it is beyond the scope of a midwife. The process is pretty seamless, and ultimately the mother and child's health is top priority. Having a doula to support you during and after your birth is a cost that you have to cover yourself, unless you have awesome extended private medical insurance through your employer. From what I have heard, doulas are incredible and especially helpful after birth. The price range varies from $750 to $1,650 in Alberta. But it also can cost a lot more than that in other parts of the country. In Alberta? Midwives and public nurses will come and visit the baby at your house a few days after the birth, which, trust me, is the most amazing offer anyone can make you. In larger cities like Calgary, there's also support of lactation specialists, which in my case was a medical doctor. I had to go to these visits, but the costs were also covered by the medical system. Home births and birthing centers. Many Canadian provinces offer options like home births and birthing centers in addition to hospital births. It's like choosing your own adventure with childbirth. The decision is often up to the mother, provided that her pregnancy is low risk. This flexibility allows expectant mothers to have a say in where and how they give birth. 
And to be fair, most women will choose to have a birth in the hospital because science. Extended maternity leave. I will get into parental leave in its own section, but Canada offers generous maternity and parental leave. Lower maternal mortality. Canada's maternal mortality rates are relatively low compared to global averages, reflecting the country's commitment to maternal health. Childbirth in the USA. Childbirth in the USA follows a different path, with a more diverse array of options and considerations. Here's what sets it apart. Health insurance. The USA's healthcare system is primarily privatized. As we discussed before, there is no surprise here. Expected mothers typically need health insurance to cover maternity care. Healthcare insurance often plays a critical role in accessing and affording maternity care, including prenatal checkups, hospital delivery, and postpartum care. Obstetricians, OBGYNs, play a crucial role in American childbirth. Most expected mothers choose to give birth in hospitals, where doctors and nurses provide medical care. It's like a well-orchestrated performance with a medical team ensuring the safety and well-being of both mother and baby. Hospitals in the U.S. offer a range of birthing options, additional labor and delivery rooms to birthing suites and more home-like settings. Shorter maternity leave. The USA provides shorter maternity leave compared to Canada. This sentence may be the understatement of the century. Federal law offers 12 weeks of unpaid leave under the Family and Medical Leave Act, FMLA. And some states offer additional paid leave options. Many working mothers in the U.S. face challenges balancing work and motherhood, as they often need to return to work relatively soon after giving birth. If you are planning on A, having children, B, work as an employee, this is something you have to deeply consider in making your choices between the two countries. Higher medical costs. Childbirth in the USA can be expensive, especially without insurance. The cost can include prenatal care, labor and delivery, and postpartum checkups. The medical bills can vary depending on factors like insurance coverage, the location of care, and any complications that may arise during pregnancy or delivery. But to give you a sense of the numbers in 2023, childbirth. The average cost of a childbirth is $18,865. Average out-of-pocket cost for those with insurance, $2,854. No delivery, $14,768. Out-of-pocket cost, $2,655. Caesarean, $26,280. Out-of-pocket, $3,214. The thing that these numbers don't caption is the exception to the rule when it comes to normal easy birth. Haha, <laughs> like that ever existed. Little babies have different needs, and the cost of a few days in the NICU can blow these numbers out of the water. Maternal health. Both countries prioritize maternal health, but they face different challenges and outcomes. Maternal mortality rates are relatively low in Canada. The country's healthcare system focuses on providing quality care to all residents, which contributes to positive maternal health outcomes. However, there are still disparities in maternal health within the country. Some remote and indigenous communities face challenges and disparities in access to care and health outcomes. Canada is actively working to address these issues through targeted policies and programs, but it is still an issue. When compared to Canada, the United States has higher rate of maternal mortality. This is a serious problem that is frequently associated with systematic injustices, disparities in health care quality, and access to care. In the United States, there's also significant concerns about racial and socioeconomic disparities in maternal health outcomes, and closing these gaps is a top priority. There is ongoing work to improve maternal health, particularly in vulnerable populations. The gist. When it comes to giving birth, which is a pretty huge and sometimes traumatic event in life, Canada does a very good job at taking the stress out of the situation by covering costs and providing a high level of medical care. If you're going to have a baby in the U.S., you're going to have to do your research for costs and try to make sure you do it at the most opportune time in your life. And if you know kids, you know they like to do things when it suits you best. That's a joke. They do the complete opposite. Questions to ask yourself. How many kids do my partner and I see each other having? Take that amount and multiply it by the average cost of an uninsured birth. In the worst case scenario, can you afford this amount? If so, the USA or Canada may be a good option. If not, Canada is a better bet. In an ideal world, you get to have the birth you want. What type of birth do you want? Do you want midwives or are you set on doctors? Honestly, I think you can plan for either option pretty easily in either country, but midwives have quite a bit of popularity and acceptance in Canada. Which option in this section seems most appealing to you and why? So, you're wondering what glass skin is and why I'm deeply into it. Um, 
As a child, I grew up in South Africa, where I kid you not, at preschool, they used to teach us songs and have a mascot, Tok Toki, for um, staying out of the sun and wearing sunscreen and sun hats. The skin cancer situation in South Africa is so bad. Uh, that um, they really actually have to do public service announcements and campaigns to uh, stop that from happening. So I've always cared a lot about my skin, but because of the influence of Korean skincare, I've really gotten into um, looking after my skin even more. I care a lot about skin health. In a healthy way? I think. I hope. I don't know. We'll see. The full story in the end credits of this video. In today's video, I read a chapter from my book, Immigrating to Canada versus USA, just to find out which country is less open to newcomers, what support systems you actually have when you are here, and which country you won't fit into. Let's jump in with an immigrant story. Shusha, I end all the chapters of my book with a set of questions that's supposed to help provoke thoughts and help you decide which option is best for you. If you want to, you can buy the book at the link down below or fill out the submission form and I will send those questions to you. 